a rainy day, I'm home alone, and as a 30-something geeky white male, I'm going to spend my day exactly in the same way that I would have when I was a 14-year-old teenager. I'm going to build and paint a space marine. First of all, we have the assembly. Now, don't get obsessed with all of these new and fancy materials like needle applicator poly cement. These are probably just things that content creators have been paid to tell you are good rather than actually being good. Just use whatever you've got around the house. Definitely make sure to prioritize any child safe products. The government mandated warnings are really reasonable, as is everyone from California on the governing bodies who've put a label on 90% of the products in our industry. I'm always worried that I'm gonna forget what I'm doing and start eating dangerous chemicals in the middle of assembling, or maybe even knives. So for this reason, I tend to prioritize Prit sticks, glue sticks, PVA, and child safe scissors, because I know that nothing can go wrong. The most important step before starting your model is to tell all of your friends and social media, including people you've never met, that you're about to start building and painting a model. Spend up to two hours doing this, thus delaying the time that you have available that day for building and painting your model. With assembly done and partially dried, we're nearly onto the fun bit of painting the model. Painting the model. Before that though, there's one more chore to be rushed through. Don't think of your base coat so much as a solid foundation to give you a perfect base to continue to do a flawless paint job there's something to be rushed through as fast as possible. Again, you are gonna cover the majority of this with paint anyway. It's a well-known fact that base coating isn't really important and it's boring. With this in mind, I'm simply gonna grab some leftover paint I have from painting in my garden last year and get the model done as fast as possible. Citadel have a really small compact range, making it very easy for beginners to make the correct decisions when starting in this hobby. Having scanned through all 7,672 of their paints, I've honed in on McCraig Blue. McCraig Blue is definitely known for being one of the best Games Workshop paints to work with. It's not ridiculously matte for no good reason, so I'm gonna be using that one. We all know that the best detail is achieved using the smallest brush possible. This is exactly the same for dry brushing. With that in mind, I'm gonna find my smallest, least resilient, expensive brush, and that will be the tool that I use for the job. I'm gonna scoop way too much paint directly from the pot onto that brush using the metal rim as a barometer for whether I've got enough. Stop exploding, you cowards! I'll then use a paper towel. Old is fine, fluffy is okay. Any texture is just an added bonus. It's a texture technique to remove excess. Don't be conservative with this. Approach this like a member of the Slanesh cult at an all-you-can-eat buffet, but for paint. It's a well-known fact that all paint behaves completely differently the moment you're using it with a dry brush. With that in mind, we're not gonna worry about dilution. We're gonna use our paint neat, and that's gonna help us achieve that classic dry brush look. Generally forget dilution, anything you've learned from people who like blending or glazing, and just proceed with reckless abandon. I'm gonna be using Duncan's One Thick Coat paint range for the majority of my painting from now on with this in mind. Having irreversibly saturated our small but expensive brush, I can just buy another. We plow it recklessly face first into a paper towel, like my friend's blind childhood dog running into a table leg after a ball it can't see. This ensures you'll never need to use the brush again after this painting session. Regardless, I still like to use an expensive one. Live fast, die young. If you've got nothing better to do, you can wait for your paint to fully dry. I don't feel this is necessary though. In the meanwhile, Grab your previous color, add white to it, which is always the best way to highlight, and simply repeat the previous step lightly over the model to really enhance those details. Before these have had time to fully dry, we're gonna bring in the classic Agrax Earth Shade. Slap that all over your model, carefully allowing it to pull in all the recesses for a cool textured effect. These stains are known as grimdark, and that definitely makes us superior to everyone else who's painting things that aren't grimdark. Now it's time to get technical. If you've heard of two brush blending, have you heard of no brush blending? Finger painting is back and it's big. This incredible technique has been used by detail artists since 62,000 BC. We're simply gonna take our strongest white, and if we're really into detail, we can use our pinky to carefully select the models that we wanna draw the most attention to. I recommend the eyes. We're now onto the detailing. This isn't particularly important, but I still like to take some artistic references to really put my own stamp on a miniature. Mine's inspired by Mad Max. Need more precision? Look no further than the neglected back end of your brush. 180 that beast, dip it in black, and you can use it to dot those pupils perfectly. If at any stage you make some mistakes, treat this the same way that you would a textbook. 
I've always got my liquid paper on hand to delete any obvious mishaps. With our model finished, we simply need to wait up to two days for it to dry. The next step is to apply the basing. Now, basing is your opportunity to set your miniature in a beautiful, realistic world. But yet again, there are tons of products out there that are absolutely pointless when all you need is a garden and a kitchen. With that in mind, I'm going to be concentrating on products from the natural world and tea because I'm British. And we're going to use that to create an incredible base. Make sure to avoid putting any wildlife on your base in case it puts snail trails on your miniatures. I really hope you've enjoyed that serious painting content from us and had as much fun watching it as we did making it, made for a little bit of a change. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend following any of those tips unless you are a certified badass. Remember how far to dip your brush. Basically, if you do the opposite of everything we've done in this video, you'll probably have quite a nice miniature at the end of it. Uh, if what we've said in the video throws up any questions, brush care, using the paper towel, that type of stuff, absolutely feel free to ask them below. We and others will probably answer them and it might help inform some future content. We've got a brush cleaning video that we've been um, delaying making for quite a while, which should be out fairly soon. And uh, there's some stuff on brush maintenance, which you get asked constantly, especially at conventions. So we've been collating all of that and we will put it into a thoroughly useful video about why my brushes last for years when other people's don't. Any questions you've got, pop them below. Uh, they'd be much appreciated. The best question will win a brush set of your choice. Hopefully you treat the brushes better than I did in this video and a texture palette of your choosing. I choose an extra large one because they're bigger. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. If you want any serious content about how to get the most out of your dry brushes and how to achieve sexy dry brushing, we have an entire channel of that. So please do feel free to check out the backlog and subscribe Lomit. Subscribe Lomit and subscribe, comment, um, hit the bell notification, all of the good stuff. That's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, the next video will be the Chaos Lord. He's looking badass. Here is a sneak peek. I can paint properly, I promise. That's gonna be our next video. We'll see you soon.